In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. There is too much hate and violence in the world. There is too much hate and violence in our nation. So, how can our faith in God move us beyond hate and violence? Toni Morrison died last week. She was the first African American uh, a woman to receive the Nobel Prize in Literature. And in an op-ed in the New York Times, Tracy K. Smith, who was a former poet laureate in the United States, said the following. It's hard waking up so often to news of the terror unspooling in America. Domestic terrorism, racially motivated violence, environmental devastation, economic instability. But the living monument of Ms. Morrison's body of work assures me that the language of peace, justice, safety, and stability must enter our imagination, as they always have, not through the language of policy, but via our willingness to regard one another as worthy of attention and love. How can our faith in God move us beyond hate and violence? In one of Richard Rohr's daily meditations last week, Wayne Teasdale said, by allowing inward change, while at the same time simplifying our external life, spirituality serves as our greatest single resource for changing our centuries-old trajectory of violence and division. People's hearts must change before structures can change. How can our faith in God move us beyond hate and violence? Second century Irenaeus said this, the glory of God is someone fully alive 20th century African-American author and civil rights leader Howard Thurman said this, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. God created us humans with minds to imagine and hearts to love and souls to believe. And, and when we're loving and imagining and believing, we are living life fully. That's what God wants us to do. Um, when we're not doing that, something else takes over, sort of a negative spirit, maybe a distraction, maybe a fear, something going on internally or in the culture, and it sort of squashes that ability of imagining and loving and believing, and we fall into a less than fully alive human behavior. And that's not what God wants. How can our faith in God move us beyond hate and violence? Well, the stories in Genesis, and it's, it's, it's stated again in Hebrew, the story about Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, um, is not so much about hate and violence, but it is definitely believing in God, having faith in God, and allowing that faith in God to move them Abraham and Sarah, into a brand new geographical location, leaving this small little town of Ur and going for miles and miles and miles in, across desert into a new territory. Um, you know it was a scary trip. You know that they were worried about going. And in fact, Abraham really sort of tried to negotiate out of it, or at least to, 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 for him to get really clear about what he would get out of it. 
But somehow, somehow he and Sarah were able to have faith in God to go into the desert, to go way beyond their comfort zone. And look what happened. As a result of those two people having faith in God, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam were born. In Hebrews, as it goes on to tell about people in the history of Christianity and Judaism uh, having faith in God, it talks also about those early Christians. All those stories about the early Christians who were, um, who had a very difficult life, who were um, beaten, who were restricted, who were, who were killed, who all because of their faith in God, and yet, and, and yet for some reason, their faith was so strong and so deep that they, they didn't waver. They continued to believe in God and went even deeper so that we, in fact, are sitting here in this church as a result of their faith in God, knowing that God was with them, that whatever happened, God would be with them, and that they were living deeply and fully into their commitment to that faith in God, in Jesus Christ. How can our faith in God move us beyond hate and violence? I think now is a time in the history of the world and in the history of our nation that we need to say yes to that possibility in a way that we may not have said before. I mean, all of us are here because we have faith in God. All of us are here because we're on a faith journey, we're on a spiritual journey, and we're willing to make a commitment to learn more and more about what it means to be faithful. And yet at the same time, it seems that there are more and more challenges that push us away from that path or pull us away from that path of faithfulness. And I think it's a time for us to stand up just like those early Christians and just like Abraham and Sarah and say, Yes, God, I believe in you. I believe that you are, in fact, providing for this world, now and in the future, a kingdom which is a holy and right relationship with you. And I am a part of that movement. I believe it's time for us to be ever more intentional and forthright of saying yes, now is the time for us to stand up and say, we believe in God, and God can make things different. I have said this in this church before because it's true, and it's just kind of like, uh, I just want to be totally open. And that is, um, you know, all of us are a, a piece of work in process. Um, and when I talk about hate and violence, I know I know that I have hateful thoughts, hurtful thoughts, and it always blows me away, like, where does that come from? Why, why did I think that thing, that pre having prejudice against somebody that is other, or that even, even hurtful thoughts, where did it come from? Immediately I feel guilty and strange, but then I realize that my responsibility as a believer in Jesus Christ is to acknowledge whatever dark spirits might exist in the world and within me and say no to it and say yes to the grace and love of God in Jesus Christ. I think probably that experience is common to all of you. Probably every single day we have the choice of being hateful or angry or violent or something. We have the choice either to let it fester within our hearts and in our minds or to say, nope, that's not really me. I'm letting it go and I'm returning to a deep commitment to God in Jesus. I think now is the time for more and more of us to be quite open about that faith journey because it's just a tough time in this country and throughout the world. And yet God is here, just as 
the gospel said, I'm with you. I am preparing for you a kingdom. In fact, we believe that the kingdom of heaven is with us right now. All we have to do is to really see it and really believe that it is and really choose to live our lives according to the principles of that kingdom of heaven. And as it says in the gospel for today, we are called to be ready, to be ready to step forward in faith or to stand up against to stand up against evil and to stand with those who have been oppressed and to really try to live a life of love and of peace and of honesty with all with whom we come in contact. And the more we work towards that goal, the more we think about it, the more we try it, the more we share experiences about it with each other, the more we will move to the point of really believing that the Christ in me loves the Christ in you. The more we move to that point that not only are we connected to each other across all kinds of divisions as humans, but we as Christians are connected to each other because of our faith in God. Sure, there's a lot of hate and violence in the world and in our nation. But our faith in God can move us beyond all of that to a place which is filled with love and honesty and will, in fact, make a difference in the world. So my question for you, my two-minute question for you today is the one I've been repeating. How can your faith in God move you beyond whatever degree of hate and violence does exist in your surroundings to a greater and more holy place? How can your faith in God move you forward? Amen.